All right, so beautiful morning. Welcome to Women's Canada. It's good to be here again. Okay, today is exciting. Just want you to know that you should join our Zoom link. And of course, uh, rather, you should join us live streaming. Of course, we are on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we are on Instagram. And you can just type in Galaxy TV to join this program. Women's Corner, it's all about women. And at the same time, we try to, you know, talk about children, talk about men at the same time because so because we're one family we have to include everybody basically so okay today we're talking about the power of sisterhood and you know this topic a lot of people were like wow so there's what they call the power of sisterhood but before we talk before i introduce my guest i want us to quickly go on a short break and right after the short break i'll introduce my guest and of course we'll start talking we will get to know why do we have sisterhood and why do we have uh, the power behind sisterhood of course it's more like women empowering women or women supporting women but there is more to that so just keep it with us and we'll be right back after the short break Okay, welcome back. Yes, uh, my Zoom guest is Ola Jumoke Lawal. She is a certified life coach uh, transform, uh, for Transformation Academy, Florida. She's an entrepreneur. She's the founder of Jumi Bold Foundation, and she's also a speaker. Good morning, Jumoke. Hey, thank you. <laughs> How are you doing this morning? Yeah, I'm doing well. Okay. All right. So, um, <laughs> obviously, we know what sisterhood is, but just for people to understand, what exactly do you think sisterhood is in the most simplest way you can explain? What is because a lot of people will believe it's just about having sisters or just having some group of women where you chit chat and all of that. So exactly what do you think sisterhood is? Okay, uh for me uh to be having a shoulder to lean on someone that can actually encourage someone that you know, especially in your lowest someone that can this person is supporting me regardless of my imperfection. The process is not this person is my sister. It's way beyond French, so this person is supporting me. You know, so sister is all about support. It's all about having a show that's really on someone that's really really about you. I don't I don't know if you can get that. you can share your experience with someone that you can actually advise so i just want to ask um having you talking about sisterhood and of course as a speaker i just want to ask have you ever experienced sisterhood and if you have how did it influence your life so that people can understand why we say what well, having our topic titled the power of sisterhood if you have had a sisterhood whereby a sister like you know group of women where they are very supportive now, how has it influenced your life to actually become a better person in a positive way? Okay, yes. Actually, I have a couple of uh, groups you know, that I know that they are more of less like sisters. And, yeah, I mean, especially I'm a prayer type. I love to pray a lot. That's, prayer is like an hobby to me. I, I love to pray a lot. And I have some kind of group that I know that these sisters, they can lift up my spirits. In fact, even when I don't feel like praying, you know, their companies will just push me to pray. So they have really influenced me. And that's prayer part. Another part is my career. I have some kind of people like, you know, they, some people, they, they call it hype. But I, for me, I don't call it hype. I call it push. Because they push you to want to 
believe in yourself, the more they see even bigger than what I personally am seeing. So they have really influenced my life a lot. They have really pushed me to doing something big, something bigger, you know. So I've really experienced it and I really, I'm really grateful for that. I really, I really appreciate God for bringing them my way, actually. I need to embrace the, the, uh, the sisterhood because, like I said, a lot of people have taken this thing for granted, you know, when, you know, you confide in someone about your experience, your information, and you find out that later in the, <laughs> let me use the word, in the power of sisterhood, some person starts circulating the rumors and telling people what you have probably shared to them in confidentiality and they start telling other persons now for I, I want you to address that issue why some you know because some people have the fear of even having sisterhood to start with now how do you think anyone yeah. can actually embrace the sisterhood and understand the power behind it and also in like manner to try and advise those who have this um how do I put it I would say opportuned to be at the um, giving end, not even the receiving end. They are the giving end, giving the advice, receiving the information, how they can actually curb this. Um, I feel like it's a desire to just want to share and tell people, uh, other persons or other women, the secrets of another woman, basically. So please go on. Okay, now for me, I, I don't really think uh, it's good for before you before you uh, go into with someone, you have to, you have to know the person. You have to know the person before you can even say, okay, what wants to confide this person? And as a matter of fact, that is not so for me. I always avoid any friendship. Okay, and you're always discussing someone with people. I want to know the kind of person that you are. I want to know, okay, if you are discussing this person's matter with me, another person's matter with me, I know that I cannot discuss my people and start telling people about me and all of that. I hope especially and but what are we encourage anyone that wants to have that kind of maybe you are the receiver or you are the giver of advice and all of that Let's try as much as possible to tell you that if you try and say before you give advice to no kind of advice, no kind of person you want to actually give this advice. Maybe this person gives advice very well. Maybe this person that is of high value, that really value like myself. I any any time someone gives me advice or something about something, um, this kind of person I'm always checking it, I'm always analyzing it. I it for me, and it does not work so far. But what I will I always uh, do is them. Uh, I will not take people granted. So if you take people granted, it is not something that is really good. So if you, if you are kind of a person that when they give you advice, you are hard about, you don't you don't even take to act, let alone do anything with it. I will advise that anybody that come across with you is actually for a purpose, it's actually for a reason. So if they come into your life, it, it may be just one word that they will give to you and they will give you that push that you need. So I would advise that if you see someone that is really showing you love and care about you, is willing to give you that push, that support that you need, I that you don't take it for granted. And if you have ever, if someone has ever taken you for granted, I'm very sorry to hear about that, but please, as much as possible, don't stop uh, giving advice to people. Don't stop giving advice. Oh, oh, I've given this advice to this person. No, I'm not. I don't. I'm not interested. I'm just face my life. No, don't face your life because you are here. Someone's destiny is tied to your soul, and you might not know something that you might say that may actually give the person that support, that uh, push that they need. So don't stop. Uh, but what I'll say that before you give advice to people, always pray and also. 
uh, know the kind of person. If this kind of person is hard, teachable. You have a teachable spirit. It depends on how teachable spirit be. You are sure that this person will not even take the advice. But if they are teachable, you will know and you, they will actually take your advice. So um, that's it. You you said something f very f uh, fabulous advice to those who get um you know get to hear the experiences of some women and intercede either by prayers or whichever way by supporting and all of that. But I want to ask: Is it right? I've seen some um, situations whereby you know a woman is probably the maybe there's a, always a president, there's a leader, there's the eldest, and um, there's an a, a part maybe whereby she they realized maybe she's sharing some of the women's information to some other persons outside like women just get to know that other persons are knowing their stories and these stories were something said in confidentiality to probably the group or in confidentiality to the president or the eldest person in their group now i've seen cases whereby they had to tell the woman off they had to first strip off the title she has then they have to send her out of the group. Now, for you, do you think that's the best way to go, or there's another way they can actually go about that? Okay. Actually, the is the president of the group. What is the essence of being in a group that you know that they are? Because I am also in a, a group like that that they share confidential stuffs that you you know. But even if at all you want to share somebody, someone, you want to tell people about a particular experience, you don't have to mention the person's name. You don't have to make it look like, oh, this is the person. And for them to remove the person from the group, I, I guess they should have um, suspended the person and let them know the reason why they removed them and also uh, give the person streets, uh, what's it called now? Maybe like a fine or something like that. But and let them know that for that group, you are not supposed to be sharing somebody's information outside, especially if the person is not aware that you are sharing the information. It's very conf anything that is confidential is confidential. So, and also when they are sharing any for information, let them know that it is confidential. You cannot share this information outside, you cannot share it with mm. other people except you take permission from such person so when anything confidential i, I feel is confidential so it, it's not something that you should go out there and be talking about let people know especially the person is not aware that you are actually sharing their authority i don't think it's, it's a good thing but they should suspend the person and not let the person out because when they suspend the person the person might realize uh is uh, or uh, a fault in this in this case but removing the person out of the group as the president i don't think is good because when they suspend the person other people will learn that oh this thing is not something that is good um, to tell outside i hope you understand so uh, i think suspending the person is actually good and um, removing it, the person from the group is also is also part of spending the person i hope you understand so they can actually know what are more ways to deal with the issue hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like what you said because I I've never actually been in support of you know taking the woman out. In fact, that could even make her start growing a bad mind towards every other person in that group. And in fact, the ones that she has probably not said before, she will not even start saying it. And probably to the wrong people. And you know, by the time you're sharing story, when is it? second party or the third party they will add my ghee salt everything just to make it look so nice that they know all the information so yes i totally agree with the suspension and of course um later when they realize what they did they can come back probably not come back to the same position but they can just come back join the group and learn to be humble and of course to accept people as they are now that's amazing now, let's talk about today's society do you think yes like you said you're in a group i'm also in a group we have a lot of women that are in a group but for today's society today's ladies today's girls <laughs> most of the group you see them join in fact let me not go that, let me not go that route but do you think that a lot of our ladies <laughs> a lot of our ladies now embrace this sisterhood and understand the power of sister do you think they actually embrace it and if you think if you say yes or no however it is how can they actually embrace this uh, sisterhood um, in a very good way, actually? 
how can they embrace it in the society now? But first, do you think they have, they are actually embracing it? Before you answer, how they can embrace it? Okay, I don't really think, especially the gens. They say they call some people gens this generation. They say they they don't really embrace our uh, unlike our own generation that we really you know, we really care about each other and all of that but this generation care about more of themselves and they don't really believe in sisterhood they believe uh, no what well, this one who, who sister would help like that word <laughs> that use of that word who sister would help this and that and all of that so they don't really believe in it and and, and i think they should really be believe in it and embrace it so that by that reason they will be able to you know gain experience of others learn from people you know get mentorship because basically for now this gen z generation most of them 95 percent of them do not believe in mentorship they just want to live their life they just want to enjoy but when it comes to sisterhood it helps you to you know to learn a lot of things about life your purpose your career education and all of that i hope you understand so it's very very important that they embrace it they, even if they don't believe it now i say oh some some people they don't trust these people some people have trusted you oh i don't believe in this i'm not believing in that but you just need to believe it you just need to believe in something i hope you understand so it's very very important that they embrace it i i i i'm going to plead that they embrace sister there are still people that are very good out there there are still people that are very very wonderful very very amazing that they can just just shine their eyes and you know they will definitely meet such person amazing thank you very much for that one uh while while we're still talking about that um let's talk about your program because when we started this program you're one of the first few that joined the program and you have you've said you already have a lot of platforms for women to join in so that they could learn skills they could you know groom themselves to be better women and when i saw the next flyer i was like okay this would be a good thing so that people can actually join and learn because like i said this program is meant to support women anyway even silas silas i think silas tutored under you right so he actually yes, sent yes, his own flyer idea. yeah he sent his own flyer so i also did the same publicity if you want if women wants to join i think his was at a belkota i think and yours too was at a belkota right yes. okay okay so yes, what can you tell us more about this okay Okay, can you tell us more about this uh, program you have coming up so that every other person too can benefit from it? Okay, yes, the impact conference that is organized by Jimmy Bowling Impact is actually the aim of the program is to teach the importance of uh, education, the importance of acquiring skills, and that's why it is tagged school is not enough because in all essence we know that school is not enough school cannot be in school. you are in school to discover the, your potential you are in school to know more about yourself not just about going to school read pass your exam pass your test and get your certificate so school is more than that and that's the reason why we are bringing this program to teach about what education really means what the importance and the benefit of education the importance of acquiring skills and uh, yes and that's exactly what we are driving at and also during the course of that program we are also bringing uh, participants on in different skills like adira like baking like um, liquid makeup and wig making and, and content creation of course so uh the program is for everyone maybe you're a student you're an intended student you're a graduate you're an individual you're a parent you should be at that program because it's going to change the narrative that school is not a scam and acquiring school acquiring skill as well is not a scam so it's something that we should embrace and we are also here for that innovation we want to change that status quo that is saying that school is not a is, is scam because in all essence school is not a scam so during the course of that program we are going to be doing a lot of programs the first day is the skill acquisition the second day is the impact conference where we'll be having our guests amazing experienced speakers that will be talking to the, to, to the participant and also we'll be having students we'll be having we we'll get them to have debate and quiz and lot it will be a lot of fun 
and very impactful program. So I'm inviting everyone. Okay, I love the part where you said Adire. I really like to know how to make Adire. Then you talked about wig. I really like to know how to make wig. In fact, if there's where they learn how to do fashion, I also want, there are some things I still want to get my hands on before I, you know, grow old and all weary. So there are some things I really want to learn. But if time will permit me, I could come. That, and that brings me to what time and what date do, um, does your uh, skill acquisition program start, this program? Okay, the skill acquisition is 27th of September, and the, the main event is, uh, is the 28th of September, 2024. And 9 a.m. on on Saturday, red carpet on, by 9 a.m., then the event starts 10 sharp. Then on, the, on Friday, the event is 10 a.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay. What's the venue? The venue is at um, National Open University, uh, Ilaro. It's in Ilaro. It's taking place in Ilaro, Ogun State, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we are using the school hall, the National Open University School Hall, to all. Okay, I like the way you're putting Nigeria, and I like the way when you said the dates, you said 2024, so they will not think it's 2025. And now when you said Ilaro, yeah, you said Nigeria. I'm now wondering, okay, is there another Ilaro outside Nigeria? <laughs> Anyways, before we let you go, very quickly, can you just give us uh, just uh, a little advice, especially like you said, most of the Gen Zs don't believe in this. They just want to get married. They want to do everything. They feel like they know it all. They know about motherhood. They know about child delivery. They know ev In fact, they just feel they know everything. By the time you're talking, they say, I know now. I will even be the one to teach you. Do you understand? So can you just give advice to um, this generation of Gen Z and the Alphas on how they can actually embrace sisterhood and of course for those who probably might have tried and had a bad experience uh, how they can actually um, get a better uh, platforms with another sisterhood okay now for the Gen Z <laughs> generation first of all I want to say that you should love yourself and also love other people love what people do celebrate people support people because one thing with um, you getting support is you also have to because you cannot uh, receive what you do not give so when you give out love you receive love in return and by by that reason you get love from a you get from love from e you get love from c you get love from d and the sisterhood you bond i hope you understand and also this generation is even easy because everything is happening on social media like the group i told you about is on social media i just go online just see stuff like that like i really, really interest me and then i join we go out we hang out go for mentorship program you know we meet and greet you know everybody and all of that so it's is that you should always um aspire to get because when you aspire to get something you definitely get it but if it, if it is not on your mind you know it's not necessary but when is a priority to you when it's very very important to you you will surely get it so i will advise you that you should try and embrace it uh, and it is very very inspiring sincerely sincerely it's very very inspiring don't just live your life to just say i want to get married i want to because there's a lot about marriage there's a lot there's life after marriage so don't don't do like that embrace sisterhood and if you have like that person that you have um done that in the past and i would i would like to tell you that you should not give up just because you 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 cannot say because you bought a bike it has an accident and you will not enter another bike so don't don't be like that don't give up look for look out for more more platforms that you know more people give out go out go to events you know we meet people network with people you definitely you cannot know someone when we when you don't when you don't network with them when you don't get to know them so try and know people try and know more more people more more people just like rose blossom i got to know you know her through uh someone so that's how the network grows and all of that so get to know people get to know go out network go to events Go to different people, different places. Don't be shy, and be a good person yourself. Because when you are a good person, you attract more good person to yourself. So work on yourself. And you say, 
uh, things will begin to align. Hmm. Thank you very much. I love what you said. They should go out. Well, please, we're not saying you should go to club. Oh. That's not where you meet the kind of people we're talking about. Yeah. We meet <laughs> you don't meet. You might meet them actually in a club, but it's very rare. So just be careful where you hang out. The kind of event she's talking about is something like the conference she's having. There are also some very impactful events you see everywhere. You can't just go be part. You get to meet people which you don't even know. Like some some persons that are looking for a job, they will tell me, uh, do you know it was when I went for that conference, I met somebody and from our conversation, there was an opening and that's how I got a job. You know, on and on like that. So I think it's better if we try and embrace the power of sisterhood. I just want to say thank you, Ola Jumakelawa, for joining us today. An amazing one for, from you, you and an amazing one you've put together for all women, for the young ones. This amount is not even just for women. So both men and women and children, students, can even partake of it. So please, if you need more information about that, you can let us know. Uh, of course, you can still check her up on her Instagram, her Facebook page. She's there. She will definitely. She's very, very quick to respond. That's one person that I know once you chat out. It's like she does not leave the internet. <laughs> she's always there to respond. But at the same time, thank you so much, Ola Jimoke, for joining. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you for all of <laughs> All right. Okay, and that's it from Ola Jumokela. Well, she is a certified life coach, transformation from uh, Transformation Academy, Florida. Uh, she's an entrepreneur. She's the founder of Jimmy Board Foundation, and she's a speaker. And of course, the conference that is coming up is uh, organized by her, her foundation, basically. Mm -hmm.